my soul needed a savage friend, a weird daredevil, but do you mend my life? You came at it and thinks you got me on the wrong track. Fought the cancer in a colder sack. Lean says bite back. On life stacked racetrack we react, lacking the cool, but we lean and we lean. Hanya sayo, chonan lim nida. Hanya sayo, chonan lianam nida. Okay, we are having technical issues today and it's driving us insane. <laughs> we are this close to quitting YouTube completely. Be done with it. Be done with it. But we're actually fixing stuff and Lean just got into a gamer browser, which means we should have a more stable connection. I need to get sorted with it, but my Mac hates me, so we'll see how Stable connection, less stable mentally Lean because she's this close to like getting up and leaving. <laughs> She's got to find all her old passwords to log into things that she's... Uh... Everything, everything. It's driving me mad. It's a new browser. It's hard to use. I don't understand what's going on. Okay. But like, okay, so Lean, we are doing BTS's Bipse, which is also called Silver Spoon, which is also... There's like a number of different names for this. But basically, um, it's the last explanation video related BTS song you're going to be reacting to and then thereafter it's just going to be fun 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 but fun, um fun, 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 so fun. this is like the final homework of the term before yes. i can have a summer break is what you're it, saying it is and what we might end up doing is go back to doing we've got to finish the uh bang tang series so yeah um, we do we do we, we do. do we've delayed that so so we're going to do the bepse one and then we're doing the lyric video now so you can try and figure out what you think it means because you're good at that and then we're going to do the breakdown explanation video and yeah I think that's about it so we're gonna that's what we're gonna be doing so and we might do a like we'll do the live performance of them doing it afterwards so okay so we'll just go straight into the scene as should I get a pen and paper and take them <laughs> <laughs> you might have to <laughs> there will be a pop quiz on this uh, you might have to I will give you a clue it is pol their most political song that is not a clue louise that's not no, helpful in any way <laughs> <laughs> okay you ready? okay go for it So far I'm getting that is a rebellious song against the archaic methods of education and what they're supposed to live up to that's come before that Korea hasn't moved with the times instead they've become harsher on the newest generations. Yeah, you you're on the right track for sure, definitely. Uh it's definitely a song about generational differences. So you're definitely getting that, definitely picking that up. And what do you think of the beat so far? I like it. Whoever has come in with that little funny <laughs> way of pronouncing things, like <laughs> as, as in the echo. So whoever sings first and then there's like the person doing the echo in a more sort of comedic way, totally on. <laughs> so totally. so uh, I love it. It sounded like J-Hope, to be honest. It was J-Hope. And they do a lot of like wordplay, voice play, comedic stuff in the song because they're making fun of the older generations. I thought that. It felt like they were mocking in the little bits that were coming in. <laughs> like the way you would mock a teacher being like, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was getting. <laughs> totally. I love this song so much. I probably play it once a day. And uh, when I'm in my car doing it, I'm like a complete mental mania because I do all the... the That's just you all the, the time, Louise. It is. Yes. It is all the time. <laughs> but I do the comedic wordplay. So I'm like, ha, ha, like I'm doing that in my car. I'm like, <laughs> so people are like, what the freak? <sighs> but yeah, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to blast the song. Okay. All right. 
also feels like it's uh, aimed at those people that maybe have got to a place they are from hard work and success and assume it should be that easy for everyone they make no separation that for some people it's just not how it is it feels like they're trying to live to somebody's standard that they can never meet 100 percent accurate 100% 100% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the, the oh, when I was your age, I bought a house for, I bought a house and I had a car and I had this. Oh, and yeah. Why don't you have it? But yeah, a car was, a house was like, there was a, there was obviously a different in, difference in wage pays, but it was much more affordable in that generation to do it. So Definitely. I've actually seen this argument not that long ago in social media between two generations one being like well my time I had a job one job and I had and the generation being are you even with the reality here it's not because inflation has made it seem like there's more it's that it literally is twice the price so if you took the value of it now and went back that 50 years you weren't getting a house for 30 grand you would have been expected to be 150 grand in exactly. that era would you have been able to do it no you wouldn't so don't come at us exactly. that's kind of what i'm getting from this song like times have changed and that the older generations don't understand that it's not just natural evolution it's that it's an impossible change it is and also even like the um like like even though inflation's happened and everything's more expensive People are not paying you more at salaries. Bosses exactly. and CEOs are still Cost paying you the living. same as 10 years ago. Exactly. So it's also harder for certain industries because a lot of um, jobs have been pushed into like AI or IT and like machines and it's not the same as it was back in here day you know what I need a few extra cash go and get a paper round like it's not that easy to go, go out and get a job anymore plus population has increased and the number of jobs has not exactly 100% see I'm getting it getting it you're getting it earning that IQ points <laughs> <laughs> But okay, I'm not going to say anything more. I'll continue when we do the explanation video to talk about this because it's a really cool topic. But okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I like that metaphor about the legs because now the younger generation they have such a higher climb than previous generations with you know shorter legs so it's more effort to get up there whereas the previous generation we had we, they're not even our generation the generation before i think we still had a pretty hard time yeah they they could just like step up because it wasn't as hard there was less things in the way yeah i'm feeling this song because we're from that generation where there was a change so i totally feel it even though we're on the older side exactly and like you'll get more of the reference the short leg reference to what it actually means with us but um like you're one of the first people i've seen that picked it up and and understood it kind of accurately but you'll you'll understand like how deep that goes when we do the explanation video so okay Yeah. <laughs> 
I swear that line was an actual legitimate conversation I had with a peer saying that it's our generation's fault that we won't moan all the time, we have it easy. And I was like, dude, you are the ones that created this. Your generation is in control. You're in power. Your people, your age. Exactly. exactly. We're struggling through the, the, the product of your efforts. Exactly. I'm feeling this song. <laughs> As the rebel I am, I had these same complaints growing up. About how, yeah, mom, you could leave school and get a job in a bakery and have a house and run a house with four kids. And you could even leave your kids at home because no one cared back then. It was the freaking 80s. You need a babysitter. My generation, no. You need two jobs just to pay the rent. And that's, you need 20 grand to get a mortgage. And nobody can save 20 grand because no one can get a job that covers their cost of living. Exactly. I guess all <laughs> even in um, Korea, like, I think, I think I was watching someone who was saying that if you rent a house uh, or even if you buy a house, like, there's, it's so difficult to get because you have to have so much, like, you can either do a massive down payment or massive interest rates. Like, yeah. it's like, it's really hard to just get a, a roof over your head nowadays, mm. you know? My very first house at the age of 19 was a, a rented apartment. It was a studio flat. So it was basically a bedroom and a living room and a kitchen all in one room and a tiny little bathroom. And it was more in rent than my mom's three-bedroom house. And I was struggling like a mofo to pay it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. I'm guessing the tryhards line is a kind of nod where they've earned the what's the word they've earned the oh yeah you guys did it because of where you are like it's okay you did try hard you you've kind of proved that all you need to do is work hard so it the like acceptance no the acknowledgement yeah because the way that they are i feel like that was a very sarcastic oh yeah now you can improve of us because you know we're somebody we made it is that okay did we try hard enough for you i'm really feeling the sarcasm in this song all the way through <laughs> because exactly how i would deliver it like oh i'm sorry did, did i sell how many bits does that am i worthy now is that i didn't sell my butt my entire life and disappoint you because you know, I don't have a mortgage at the age <laughs> when you had two. It's yeah, the sarcasm. And this whole song embodies sarcasm. I love it so much. It's very on Lean's level. <laughs> it's just the whole attitude and everything. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you notice this now? Well, thank you. Because I tried so hard, like you did. <laughs> The, the, you'll notice when we do the choreography it like very much ties into that playful sarcasm and it's such a well done song they do they do so well with it too poetic you can tell that this that this is relatable for lean she's lived through that <laughs> <laughs> I I know, swear. oh <laughs> It was all the way through that chase same same all the way through it was so funny. It's so I like cute. that. It's got a good beat and it's very attitude and a sarcastic way. And you could feel the sarcasm even though it was in Korean. <laughs> yeah, you can. It just like leaks all the way through. So so good. Okay. Yeah, kind of so let's do the explanation. Have you got the link for that? Okay, sorted. 
Okay, so yeah, this is the next one. What's this one? Loads this is the them. explanation video explained by a Korean. So uh, let me just head check what is. I know the tent legs, stort legs is gonna have its basis in some Korean like scent. What do they call those? You know when they like how we have like. Yes. What even are they called? <laughs> Fables, like uh, legends, like uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's gonna be one of them. I have like a meaning. Those. A meaning to it, exactly. Yeah, like meaning like the short tip versus the tall <laughs> stork or some. Like, there's going to be a story. I just know it. Yeah, get out your study notes. No, it's not <laughs> TV. <laughs> but this is like the so this is DK DK TV. He's amazing at explanation videos, and he's such a cool guy. And yeah, this is the explanation video. So let us enjoy. Okay. <laughs> A lot of BTS is newcomers. Before we get into it though, isn't a quote always um, in East Asian proverbs seen as the underdog? Yeah, good girl. Ooh, those yeah. K dramas are paying off for you, hey? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Actually, it was a C drama. I do remember it was a C drama that was explaining something. <laughs> and okay. the stork is seen as like a nobility, is seen as like a proud, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're like a. What is that word? Regal kind Regal. of an animal. Whereas the quote is seen as something that is like scouring the depths and the gutters and is like a shady the mud. little commoner peasant. Oh my God, <laughs> you are so impressive, girl. Look, I did not spend my life watching K-drama for nothing, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continuing on. Back, we are taking a look at their fiercest and most political song. Pepsi. Sorry, could you have a more sarcastic dance routine? Because that <laughs> feels like when I'm taking the mech out of something. Um, whatever. Whatever. Um, that's how that, that, that right there, that choreo, is this movement in a dance form like whatever <laughs> um also i just wanted to side note before we get into it so you're not distracted like their outfits in this are so on point like i love like rm's little majuni's little harry potter vibe he's got going on there i was going to say he kind of looks like kid on the first day of kindergarten he's so to cute. Be honest it's adorable <laughs> and then jk's rocking the like the nice like almost doc barton construction work boots with the with the white shirt really looking cool jin's rocking the blonde hair really well um j-hope's just looking like fit j-hope they're all looking really cool in this so go with his little face mask me. on though he is channeling me. <laughs> He's channeling you. And then Sugar with his face mask. It's, mask, it's so cute. But I love his little black little emo outfit. They're all looking good on this. So that's definitely first day kindergarten vibes for it's it. So cute. It's so cute. It's adorable. I just can't deal. So. Oh, you can find somebody that tall to be adorable. To I'm be tall honest. too. So <laughs> still taller than you. He is taller than me. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. First of all, you need to know this Korean idiom. It means when you try to do something that's out of your reach, out of your capabilities, then you will likely fail. Crotets or pepse have short legs, but storks have very long legs. So obviously a crotet trying to catch up to a stork will likely fail. Here the storks are referring to people in power, the big companies, conglomerates, and older generations. And in this video, I will focus Lean is clever. <laughs> she is. <laughs> on She's the last so meaning of older generations uh, because the previous two meanings have been covered a lot by other explanations. Here, BTS is using crotids as a metaphor for the younger generation or the millennials of South Korea. They are trying very, very hard to catch up with their parents' generation, uh, the baby boomers or the storks. Uh, they also use another metaphor. Hey, 
we're not millennials, but we came after the baby boomers. <laughs> we're the forgotten generation. We are. They always forget about us. But we're almost millennials. I think when you look at us, like when we were born, we're like almost. We are, but we're the terrifying generation. We're yeah. the hard ass generation. We were called the latchkey kids. We were yeah. the kids who basically got like, we're going to work, see you later. Fend for yourself until we get home tonight. Yeah, if you exactly. go to school, that's great. If you don't, do the dishes and put dinner on. Yeah, exactly With exactly I, I i remember doing that every day like when my mom and dad were working was come home put food on for everybody do the cooking do everything else do the cleaning get everything ready Same. So that was my routine and then do homework see that's why i like renegade so much because it actually sings and says we are the forgotten generation and it's such a rel relatable <laughs> song because we're like <laughs> We're like the in between. We totally feel you, millennials. We do. We're not boomers. Please don't look at me and say boomer because I'm literally this much too young to be a boomer, and I relate to this. Well, that's the thing is, like, I'm I, I relate way more to millennials than I do to boomers. Way I do. more. So I feel like, I feel like a millennial. Millennial humor too. Yeah, me too. I definitely don't have boomer humor. All my friends are millennials, so I don't think I've got one friend that like is a boomer so yeah but see i'm the opposite i've got loads of boomer friends and they treat me <laughs> like i'm the kid they're always like you're you're for the next you're like the child's generation and i'm like actually no <laughs> i'm only like three years younger than you but <laughs> yeah i feel funny. this this we we should be classed as millennials yeah we, we could just get on we'll just say we're 10 years younger and then that's just, it that's it that's exactly. fine <laughs> that, that, that's what's me <laughs> ready you ready? Metaphor of teacher to refer to the uh, older generation who are born with a golden spoon. They say this because during the ages of the baby boomers in South Korea, they were experiencing huge economic growth and it was extremely easy to get jobs, get housing and stuff like that. But the economy in South Korea is now at its maturing stages and the side effects of ultra fast economic growth have boomerang to haunt the current generation. See, I think that's where the difference is, right? So Korea, I feel like they were about a decade behind the West in yeah. that change. So that's the reason we relate more to the millennials of Korea because our era, a decade before, they, that's when they hit that peak. So my exactly. mom's generation... That's probably why we always feel like we're like mm. aligning a little bit. <laughs> totally agree with you. I think that it is. It was like there was a slight delay in difference uh, of a decade. And, and that's why we definitely identify with this. Totally. Yeah. Generation. Currently, the millennials are facing extremely high pricing of houses, as well as high disparity between the rich and the poor, and also extreme all-time high youth unemployment. <laughs> In this verse, BTS addressed. Isn't it sensei a Japanese word for teacher? I think it might be. They might be just doing a wordplay and using it. Could be. Yeah, it is sensei as a teacher. Because in Korean, it's, it's a. a Sang 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 yim something like that. Yeah, sang sang yim. Sensei is Japanese. Yeah, they Wonder. they're very good with their English, Japanese, and maybe uh, just fit the rhyme better. Yeah, to get that sorted. Sensei, sensei. <laughs> the sarcasm. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Or maybe it's loosely connected to the oppression and control by a certain country over a certain <laughs> another country for a long time so rather than just say teacher they're like sensei in a sarcastic way like it's a kind of an insult could be could be or is that just lean's twisted dark mind it's your twisted dark mind but it could be you never know so just not trying to get too political here. <laughs> In a political song. <laughs> this is the social injustices that millennials commonly face in Korean society. For example, passion pay. This is a very common practice in Korean society where companies basically pay young workers below minimum wage or nothing at all in return for experience. The company What do we call those in the West? Interns. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. I think it's a very similar setup. I think it's worse though in Korea because the interns at least have rules in in a Korea. I think that the ones that get passion pay don't. There's no rules to how they treat them. 
So I might be getting passion um, pay when I move to Korea. <laughs> I feel like uh, the rules over interns in the West, it, it's only in more recent times that yeah. they did actually start regulating it. That's and true. And some kind of shady things that went. <laughs> that is true. You're right. It's only recently the last five years. They are absolute buttons and like yeah. not enough not even a wage, not enough to live on, but yet they're working yeah. full hours. Yeah, they still get paid crap, so. Mm -hmm. Be ready. Yeah. The company's logic is because they are offering a job and an experience that many young people have passion for, they are the ones at, that are actually doing the service for the young people. Enposete is another newly made word that is used to describe the millennials of this decade. They are a generation that have basically given up what many consider to be basic human rights and wants because of extremely high youth unemployment rates and also very low wages compared to living costs. We have many different variations of Mposede to describe the millennials of South Korea. It originally started from Samposede, which is used to describe the millennials that have given up dating, marrying, and giving birth due to economic instability. Then it evolved to Oposede, which added giving up employment and buying your own house. And then it evolved into chilposede, which added human relationships and hope. Now the word emposede is most commonly used because they have basically given up all their dreams and hope. <laughs> In these lines, BTS talks about their want to change the system. The word 정상 in the last lines has a double meaning. First, it means normal, and second, it means top. So basically, not only is BTS talking about how this is not a normal situation, society is sick, but also they are saying we are not at the top yet and we have to push further. <laughs> Here, BTS addresses how the older generation blames the millennials for their struggles, saying that it is due to a lack of effort. The word 노력 is pronounced <laughs> 노력 by BTS, and this is a very commonly used internet slang among millennials to sarcastically describe how the older generation blames them for the lack of effort. Baby boomers often neglect the fact how society is completely different now compared to when they were growing up and also the economic situation is completely different. When you think it, right, how different can it be? We started life with no internet, no Google, no emails, no instant chat, no streaming TV, no freaking... We didn't even have seatbelts in the backs of our cars. <laughs> Car seats for babies were not a thing. Like I am literally old enough to remember the invention of Google <laughs> I was a teenager when Google came out and we had to go through that transition. Yeah. We had dial up internet. Yeah. Remember that? You watch the internet and your dad would shout, get off the internet. I want to <laughs> use the phone. <laughs> I would play Commodore 64, which was like, what's it? Oh my God. Yeah. King yeah. Kong and Con Commodore 64. What was the other one? It started with an A. Pac-Man. It was a computer that started with an A. Oh, That's yeah. That's my brothers had. See, I was too young even for to play that. They had <laughs> that, and I was littler. I just had Barbies. <laughs> but, yeah, we went through the whole transition. We basically went through the changing of an entire way of living. Exactly. The changing of, like, through our generation. So yeah. the next generation that came along... They had no concept of what it was like living in that. <laughs> like, it's a complete cut-off point You're of a completely me. different existence. How they can apply the old standards to now is beyond me. And they still do it. It's it's crazy. That is. Right, you ready? Yeah. That was just a lean rant for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's just feeling this a little bit too much. Feeling it. <laughs> He's just like, listen, I, I've had this, boys. I've had this drummed into my head my whole freaking life. And for some <laughs> reason, 
we became the generation that all of a sudden it was no longer just okay for girls to be mums and girlfriends. We became the generation where, sorry, ladies, after all this time, you also need to get your butts out and work and <laughs> make a career or you too will be a failure. But yeah. you must also still get married to have children, juggle motherhood and be successful at that or we're still going to judge you. And, and, and cook a full cooked meal every night oh, yeah. and, be, and keep the your house work. clean and yeah. wear makeup every day and look yeah. presentable yeah. and make sure the kids are fed and washed and dressed. And, and serve present. your husband. And getting <laughs> straight A's in school while still never being too tired for your husband's demands. Yeah, exactly. But he's not to lift a finger. Oh, hell no, because <laughs> you're raised by the 1950s mothers. You must cook clean smile and do as he says while being the generation that wants to rebel that no. but still doing it <laughs> yeah we came from that it's no wonder we're messy we're messy in the head we're messy all over mentally damaged <laughs> <laughs> i swear we are that's why what are we gen x gen x yeah we're gen that's x that's why People avoid Gen X. They don't argue with them on the internet. <laughs> they just, we're just like that little bubble of people where you're like, mm, they're humans dark. They fended yeah. from themselves since they were like three. <laughs> we're beaten. You don't mess with Gen X. No, we were beaten by parents and teachers. Yeah, that was the era where it was still okay to wh whoop the hell out of your kids. <laughs> Leave them outside all day, make them drink from the garden hose. It was a case of you went out to play in the summer and your mom would be like, come home when the street lights come on and you're thinking it's 8 a.m it's 8 a.m mom the street lights come on tonight have i just leave <laughs> yes we went you just yeah. gone just stay yeah. away feed your eat grass exactly and we still had capital punishment at school so yeah we did <laughs> i had a teacher that threw a blackboard duster at my head and one teacher that hit me with a ruler <laughs> If I had a teacher who hung up a kid by the back of his jacket and nearly strangled him to death, a physical ed teacher. <laughs> we had a, a high school teacher that pinned the child to the wall by the throat in the <laughs> corridor for calling her a name in passing. Like, we grew up, and that was acceptable. Nobody yeah. did nothing. <laughs> no, they were just like, oh, he annoyed just like, <laughs> Yeah, he shouldn't annoy the teacher. <laughs> like, okay, then. Oh, right, you ready? Ready. <clears throat> They also neglect the fact that a lot of the economic problems that these millennials face today were in fact caused by baby boomers. For example, mm -hmm. housing prices that are extremely high so that millennials have basically given up buying their houses. These were driven up by baby boomers buying multiple houses in, in yeah. speculation and for investment purposes. Yet many baby boomers simply neglect the fact and tell the millennials that they should try harder, work harder, so that you can perhaps buy a house 20 years later. You know something, it's the rebel in me that at my age I am now, I still have never had the urge to buy a house. You I will same. rent until the day I die. Same, but a lot of millionaires say renting is the better option, so I'm okay it with is. that. <laughs> it definitely is in this country, because if yeah. you rent, you're not responsible for things. Like if the boiler breaks down tomorrow, that's yeah. not 600 quid of my money to fix the boiler. I'm sorry, but hello, <laughs> your boiler's broken down. <laughs> exactly. Renting makes yeah. way more sense. It Even if I won well. the lottery tomorrow, I would still not buy a house. I would yeah. rent all the way. I agree. So suck it, baby boomers. <laughs> Because we ain't you. <laughs> Love the choreo. It's so cool. <laughs> On the surface level, these lines just simply seem like a cry for help. A call for a helping hand. However, the word Pepsia in the no, very last line is a very like clever play on me. words. <laughs> Basically, this word would sound like a curse word to the Korean ear. It sounds very, very similar to shipseya or keseya, which <laughs> are both very serious. Both not new words to lean. <laughs> also. <laughs> what is that? Another Korean swear word that Lin has on her <laughs> post <-it> more. <laughs> it's the only way you're going to learn the Korean language. <laughs> Hey, this is the joys of having Korean friends who are fluent in English who will happily <laughs> teach you swear words. Just saying. <laughs> if the only thing I ever learned to speak in Korean is swear words, 
that is actually that's a possibility that's probably <laughs> the only thing i'll ever learn to say um but like in saying this i love the way that um bts almost insults with a swear word but doesn't quite get there they like change the meaning word slightly play. and the word play slightly they're so good at that they are they're so good at passive aggressive you you can hear the rm the sugar <laughs> and the j-hope like in there with that little sassy passive lover. aggressive jab yeah. Yeah. Mm, totally i love it that's why we like them though <laughs> yes various <laughs> curse words in south korea so not only are they crying for help and not only are they asking the protests to unite but they are also calling the older generations <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm totally on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, so and this is it. the live. Yeah, this is yeah them performing live on stage. Um, so just enjoy it and okay. big screen as well. Oh, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> Is that you? Hey, hey, hey. I never asked you, is this one of their like older songs? Like how old is it? Oh, I don't know. I think it is from like 2017, maybe 16. I think it was before they hit big fame. Yeah, I'm getting the their early debut. Because I know that one of the things that kind of pushed them to their success was that they spoke for the youth and they spoke to the youth. So I, I'm kind of seeing this is still in that same, yeah, like little bubble of songs that they wrote that is very rebellious and f you to the higher ups. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's like I think it's like in the middle of their ten year career. I think it was like five years into their career. I'm not sure though. Would have to check. But yeah. They're also looking fun. They are. They all look good in black. And they always look so good in black. So they do. Right, you ready? Okay. Okay. I love the leg choreo. <laughs> It's so cute. I love it. <laughs> Look at my long legs. No, these are the short legs of Crote. <laughs> Take them in. Look at them. See them as they come and swing and kick you up the ass, bitch. And they also do the a lot of like the hip thrusts, like that. Yeah, I know. So that's a very attitudey thing. That's a very f you thing. Yeah. Whatever. That mm -mm. is like f you. <laughs> I love and it. So we have a move that used to be major trending when I was a teenager. Instead of saying someone F off or we had a move, I don't know where it came from, maybe friends or something where you went, oh, like, and it's very similar to this. And that was a big, that's what it means to me. It means, well, F you. <laughs> was there a um, Ross from Friends? He used to do this or something like that. It was like, oh, like that. <laughs> yeah, it was that. But the Scottish version, wait, I have to do it. It was basically like, mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very similar to what they're doing. And that is like that trended when I was like twenties, and everyone was doing it to each other as well. F you, it's so good. I'm yeah. looking at this one. Like most of them are blondie in this one. I think I've noticed that. Like in the middle, but the rest are like there's like three or four members that are blonde. 
Right, you ready? Yep. With our FU choreo. <laughs> <laughs> It's the hand <laughs> movement. <laughs> the little wing. The little crotted wing. It's, it's just day. oozing in sarcasm. <laughs> choreo. It's not just the song. It's whoever did the choreo took aboard that feeling <laughs> and that understanding <laughs> and put everything into it. Let's think, what dance moves over the years have been very much symbolism for sarcasm, <laughs> suck it, and F you? Let's put them all together. That's so what this good. choreo is. This song is always my, like, go-to war song and my happy song. I love it so you much. what Adam's hand movement is. So I don't know if you done it where you were, but when you were younger and you would be arguing with your pals and they would give you, like, an insult. You would go, ew. <laughs> And that's what that is. <laughs> it's nice so because it's like got a double a double meaning because it's that, but then it's also the croated. The like it is. Oh, it's just a little that as well as like I'm knocking you. <laughs> Ooh, you're so big. You're so hard. So that sounded a little bit sexual. <laughs> a rub it. I should maybe never I'm use that of... tone of voice again while saying that. <laughs> oh. Okay, you ready? Ready. This is way more fun than I thought it would be for a diss track. <laughs> or maybe it's just us. <laughs> it is. It's so much fun. This song is. Army loves the song. They adore the song so much. Right. Okay. Could that change from bang to bank? Uh, did it? It might have been a mispronunciation of the actual lyrics. I was just wondering if it had a double meaning there because you say bank be. when you're talking about money. It's, it could be. Let's have a look at that and see. I missed that. I'll go back and see if it's there. I don't know if I imagined it. Oh, wait, there's bang bang. Oh, yeah, you gotta go back. <laughs> yeah, I think I just misread it. Let's see. I don't know. I think I misread it. Bang, bang. What is it? It's where it cuts off on the bottom of the screen. It looks oh, like a K. The bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> The mocking voice of JK, you must be kidding me. <laughs> so I don't know if that was Sugar or JK, because I always thought Sugar did that. You must be kidding me. You, you no, must I thought be that kidding was JK. Me. So but I'll go back and see. I don't know, Army, was it JK or was it Sugar that does that? Because I've you always see thought him it was... Watch. Look, he just goes straight to his face. He does it just like Sugar. That's incredible. He's mimicking it, though. He's doing it purposely. Yeah, he's doing it purposely. Oh, my God. Oh, you're crazy. We can do it after you. You must be kidding me. Yes, you must be kidding me. You, you must be kidding me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But we know JK is good at mimicking his youngs, so yes. he probably deliberately made it sound like sugar. Because that was a very mocking way of saying it. It was I, like he was trying to sound different. I'm wondering if on the actual soundtrack, Sugar does it, but then in the live, JK decided to do it. It could be that, because sometimes he does that. Sometimes the youngs let him do like their lines for them, so it could be that. I maybe. always was convinced it was Sugar that did it, but maybe it's just a JK doing it's it with the way like, he a does it. attitude. He yeah, he does it mockingly. It's a sarcastic way. You must be kidding me. <laughs> you, you. That's my favorite line of the whole song. Like, I love that so much. I always sit in my car like, you, you must be kidding me. You, you must be kidding me. Channel in your inner lean. I am. <laughs> <laughs>
I love that they're never out of breath with all the intense choreo. That's a lot of work to jump on one. Oh, they are out of breath. You can hear it sometimes. It's just sometimes. they're really good at covering it, <laughs> covering it up. Yeah, they are. But they like they like you can see they're exhausted. Look at Jin's face there. But like they're well, well yeah, they're doing an to, excellent. Yeah, job. They are on a very big stage. You don't realize how hot those things can be, especially with all the stage lights. Like you can be freezing cold. Just came out from the worst weather. Walk onto a stage under those stage lights, and in three seconds you are sweating. It's crazy. Stage lights are intensely hot, even if they're really high up. That's crazy. Plus, they're jumping around. They're wearing a lot of layers of clothes. And they are. By the fact that it seems to be open air and very dry, it's probably middle of summer as well. Yeah. Because I've never seen sugar sweat that much. <laughs> It's like damn it all. You can see they're all like dying like, there. Did, did you need a tissue. You've got the makeup. I'm impressed with the makeup has not moved. <laughs> Korean waterproof makeup. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Sugar sweat that much when he's done his like tour videos, but this looks like it was a one-off song for something like a show, and they're very sweaty for one song. <laughs> yeah, they might have had something before and after that made them also work up the sweat. So. Yeah, because they're very sweaty. All of them. I noticed that on like a couple of them, they're very sweaty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> John's break. That's so cute. Oh, I like, love that. We like we heck sake with this YouTube man. Oh, that was a, a long couple of videos, but they were very entertaining. It was. So, but BTS deliver sarcasm with grace and beauty. They do. It's the sassy that I live for. It's the kind of funny sassy with a message, but a little bit clever that you have to really think about what's being said. Yeah. Exactly. And this song grows in you every time you listen to it. And then you start saying it in everyday conversation. <laughs> You're like, Betsy, <laughs> you must be kidding me. You must be kidding me. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I like oh. it. I'm glad I got the message, though, and related to it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so are you? do you think this is one that's going to go on your playlist? Yeah, this is going on the la 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 like list. Let's because it is a good tune. Yeah. But it also channels leans inner in savage <laughs> inner savage yeah i like the sarcasm i like the fact that it was a sarcastic choreo and it's rap mostly yeah and it's a good beat i feel like adam and sugar had a lot to do with the lyrics in that song because yeah. i feel like it's their kind of savageness coming through yeah I totally agree with you on that. And I think it's like RM is very socially aware of stuff that happens and sorry, sugar. And they definitely probably like said, this has to be said, you know, so. I feel like that was like an uh, amalgamation of the two of them. Knowing the kind of songs they write separately, that definitely felt like a mesh in the middle of things that they write about. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I loved it. It was really good. I well, thanks guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're not going to keep it too long because it's already 51 minutes, but we yeah. really enjoyed that. And, and I mean, have it. to edit these <laughs> long ass videos. I have to okay? put translations with your musty accent. Yes, and my accent is fabulous. I say pizza, you say pizza. Happy I scrub. say Evanescence, you say. Say it. Happy Scribe thinks she said pizza. She's avoiding it. She's <laughs> avoiding saying Evanescence because she say, makes it sound like Venison's. a brand. There, what even is that? <laughs> what was it the other day? You oh. always make fun of me for saying Ajima. pizza. Say Ajima. 
Ajuma. <laughs> <laughs> And it's my accent that's dodgy. Every scribe took on the, the translation apps don't even understand you, so I have to freaking yeah. write out everything you say. It's all so. right. We're the one country in the world that speaks English fluently, and yet 99% of the rest of the English speaking world do not know what we are saying. We so. don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I know because you're my friend now. So <laughs> I'm actually quite a well spoken Scottish person. I'll have you I know, know. that's true. There I come from the Scottish Highlands and Islands, so I speak speak relatively better than the lowlands <laughs> there is some really this, bad scottish accents <laughs> yes, most of them are my family i don't speak <laughs> half as bad as people that i know go on dean say a line in a really heavy scottish accent my local dialect where i live okay give me something to say and i will say exactly how the people who live around me say it say i say thanks for watching fan base it's been fun all right, there. Thanks for watching their fan base. It's been all right and all that. Okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs> all right, all right. How you doing there, we pal? Oh, it's nice to meet you and all that. I'll come in again. I'll see you next time. All right, there. Bye. <laughs> there we go. That's my local <laughs> dialect. As the people that live around me, I am very posh compared to them. But I'm not You're lucky posh. I don't have a very heavy South African accent because that would be worse. See, the funny thing is, you are one of two of my best friends who are from South Africa. So there are times, in fact, you're actually the third. I have had three South African, South African friends. Best friends. Yeah, wait, this is starting to sound like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have a thing, a fetish. <laughs> I'm starting to think so. <laughs> but yeah, you've probably got the poshest accent of the three. That's Which is weird know. because I know where you're from is considered rougher than where H is from. Yeah. But you definitely have a posher accent. I do. I, it's because I'm from an English speaking family. I think that helps. But then also, I don't know, my grandmother was very British, so Irish British. So that might be it. Dodgy accents. I know. Well, we're just going to have fun when we get to Korea and they have to try and understand us with these dodgy accents. So. <laughs> I'll be helping you, Jin Shi, try to fix our dodgy accent translations. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just sat back and laugh. I'll just have to be your translator in Korea because I'll be translating your English to English. <laughs> she wants a hamburger. <laughs> Aye, she does. <laughs> uh, oh, I have to say, my Korean pronunciation sometimes is a bit better than yours. It's true. Sometimes I get bad habits. So sometimes I get bad habits, but that's because I just lack of practice. I've got to get back into it's it. It's your dialect, it's your accent, though. It affects the way you pronounce certain letters and certain words. So we both say the same thing, and then they sound completely different. Yeah, they do. So some of my stuff that I, I, trans, I, I say really well, and other stuff I'm really bad at. So anyway, and guys, I might be moving to Korea maybe in the fall, in the autumn. Lean and I'm in no way encouraging that. <laughs> She's like, do it, do it, do Money it. Money moving, money moving. <laughs> go, go, go. Go, go, go. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm visit. heavily okay. considering it now. It's like my top choice of, because I'm battling to get a job here in the States and I'm applying at different fields, but like, I mean, they have to get a really good paying job here or I'm going to move to Korea. So, because not only will I be, I'll be teaching like most foreigners do in Korea, but I'm also going to be working for our producer in the film industry and learning and uh we we aiming to produce a netflix based film so that's he's excited and really wants me to come but yeah i'll start off teaching and then as i learn his industry and i he's sending me to a korean school for six months to learn the language then i'll transfer over to his uh, business hopefully but yeah we wish we're not sure but yeah Lena is just thinking about the fact she'll no longer have to use online Asian stores to get Korean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, Louise, send me something. I've so. run out again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you you're welcome to be, and like you my you, you can come over and hang with me whenever you need to. It'll be so in our fun. shared house. In our shared house, <laughs> and we can go to concerts. <laughs> in our shared house. My home away from home. To be your other home, exactly. So. No sleeping on you, Jinshi's floor anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out in my little one-room apartment. So we'll do it. 
So. I'll sleep on the balcony. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You'll be you'll be sleeping in my bed, and I'll be sleeping on the like air mattress. That's how it'll oh, work. So. Sleep in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm excited. We've taken this to a whole other level. We have. Okay. Time for us to leave. Yes. When we start getting silly like this, it's usually right time to turn off the camera. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks, guys. And that was so much fun. Okay. We'll catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoy our randomness at the end. Bye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) You did a good job, Lini. Please don't. Hey, fan base. So fluffy. What so is cute. actually wrong You're ready? with you? You're dance such a freak. Dance dance. System failure. Lean, sudden, hey. Ew. Ah!